This is a lesson on comparing and ordering fractions. And so the strategies that we are going to use are all uh, visual ones, like picture sort of strategies. There are four that we will go through, and we'll do an example together for each one. So <clears throat> the first strategy you have done before in the past, but um, now you're going to use this strategy to compare. So you're going to get equal strips of paper for each fraction that you need to compare. So if you have three fractions, then you get three papers. If you have two fractions, then two papers, and so on. Um, and you could get actual strips of paper and fold them, or you could draw strips the way I have done here. Okay? Um, and then, so what you will do is for each strip, you'll look at the denominator. And so this one has four, so we'll make four equal parts, and then we'll cover color three of those parts in. And then we'll do the same thing for three fifths and five eighths. Okay? And then uh, the least fraction will be the shortest colored strip. So we will move this here. Um, we will complete this one together. So if you if you can grab your pencil and follow along, you need to copy this onto your paper. So first, I've written this for you. You've got three out of four. So we look at the bottom number first to see how many pieces this needs to be broken into. So there's two pieces. And there's four. Now you'll notice I did the half one first. I find it easiest for even numbers to cut the strip in half first and then work my way out because it's important to make these as even as possible. It might skew your results if you don't. Okay, so let's work on dividing these all up first. Next one we have to do is divide it into five parts. So this one won't have a middle because um, five is an odd number. So uh, five, and this is where folding might come in handy instead of drawing, but here's one, two, oh, well, that's not good. Hang on. About there, two, three, and then four, five. It's close. This one should be smaller, though. See, this is where you need to need to take the most time is making sure that you have these as even as possible. Okay, and then the bottom one needs eight. So that's another even number. So I can go half first again. And then I will do follow these points here. So that's four. Now I need eight. So I'll draw a line in between each one of these pieces. Okay, so now I've done the numerator part. I've done the four the 5 and the 8. Now I need to do the 3, the 3, and the 5. So um, here I need to color in three of these. So it's a little difficult on the computer here to color in like this. So it's not going to look the greatest. But here's there's three for the top one. Oh, that's terrible. You should color in nicer than this. Um, and then we need three here. One, two, three. And then we need five here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. There. Now, if we've done this correct, then this should show that um, so my least fraction is the shortest, and it wants from least to greatest. So that means that I would go three-fifths is the shortest, and then five-eighths, and then three-fourths. So you'll notice that you can't always tell just by looking at the fraction which one will be smaller and which one will be bigger. 
because a bigger number doesn't always mean a larger fraction because this strip is the one that's colored the most. Okay, the next strategy is similar, but instead of strips, we're using fraction circles. So, um, what you need to do is similar to the one above, instead of having uh, strips that are all the same, you want to have circles that are all the same size. So I've drawn two here because we need to compare three-fourths and five-eighths. So we sort of start the same way. We look at the denominators and we divide our pieces up accordingly. So this one, oops, um, just move this down a bit. So we, this one needs to be four pieces in our circle. Four pieces. It's not perfect, but it's close. And this one needs eight pieces. So I start with four again. And then I draw one line this way and one diagonal line this way. And that makes my eight pieces. Okay, and then um, what I need to do is um, I need to color in the numerator. So this one needs three pieces. And this one needs five pieces. So here's one two, three, four, and five. Now it helps. Um, you'll notice that I made both of them have this one colored in and then worked my way around that way for both of them because it's easier to compare when I have the same um, part opened and same part colored because now I can tell that this much is colored here and a little bit more is colored here. So that means that when I'm comparing my fractions, the part that's shaded in more, that has more color, is the bigger fraction. So the alligator eats the bigger number, so I would draw my arrow like this. 3 fourths is greater than 5 eighths. Okay, so that's strategy number two. Now we go on to strategy number three, which is um, drawing a number line. Now this one can get a little tricky, We'll go through it though, and um, it requires you to know what halves and fourths and eighths mean. So, what you want to do first is I've got the number line here, and um, actually, I'm going to use no. Okay, we're going to draw number line, and it has to go from zero to one because fractions are in between there. So, on this end, oh, whoops. Here we go. On this end, we have a zero. Zero always, always goes on the left, and one would go to the right of it. Okay, and the fractions will all be in here. So, um, we want to show halves. So that means that we're just showing half. We're showing 1 over 2. That's this one. Okay, then we need to show fourths. So that means 1, 2, 3, 4. So that means we need 1 over 4 here. This would be 2 over 4, but that's an equivalent fraction. That's the same thing. And this is 3 over 4. Okay, and then it also suggests that we uh, make eighths. So that's all the ones in between here. Okay, so this would be 1 over 8, 2 over 8. Oh, sorry, not 2 over 8. This is 2 over 8. This would be 3 over 8. 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, and over here would be 8 eighths. Okay, so this just helps us to um, give benchmarks on our number line so we can figure out uh, where things go. So now we need to mark our fractions from the problem. 
Okay, and evidently I forgot to write that on the paper. So here is our problem. We need to order one half, three quarters, one quarter, and five eighths. So I've, I'm lucky here on my number line. I've got all of those already written. So now I just need to um, circle them or point them out. So one half would be right here. Three quarters is here. One quarter is here. And five eighths is right here. So um, fractions on this side of the number line are smaller than the ones on this side of the number line. So in this case, if we want to go from least to greatest, then we would just write one quarter, one half, five eighths, and three fourths to get our answer. So there it is. There's my answer here. And you'll notice that I put commas in between each of the fractions. That's what you do to uh, separate them. Just put a comma to show that's the order. Okay, so this is number line. Sometimes it gets a little tricky, but it's, it's handy when these benchmarks here are all part of the problem. Now, if we go to the last one, is equivalent fractions. Now, we were working on this last, the last lesson. It's probably the most difficult mathematically, but um, sometimes it's the easiest, depending on what you're looking at. So, um, what it is, is you have to list equivalent fractions until either the numerators or the denominators are the same. So, First, um, let's list some equivalent fractions of two-thirds. So remember, I can find these by multiplying this fraction by uh, different numbers, but the numbers have to be the same for both top and bottom for each equivalent fraction. So if I did uh, multiplying by two, then two times two is four, and three times two is six. So there's one equivalent fraction. Then I can go back here and multiply them both by 3 then. Then I'll do times 4, times 5, um, and then times 6. That should be enough. We'll see. So 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. Then by 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 5 is 15, and 2 times 6 is 12, 3 times 6 is 18. So here's some equivalent fractions. This might be enough for us to find uh, ones with the same numerator or the same denominator. We'll see. Now we need to do 3 fifths. So... First, we'll multiply by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 3 will do. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 3 is 15. And I'm going to stop there because I've just noticed here that we've got the same numerators in this fraction. So we can see that. And we've got the same uh, denominators right here in these fractions. So we can show both. Okay, so down here, before we figure this out, now that we've found uh, one with the same numerator and one with the same denominator, um, let's look at the rule. So when the numerators, the top numbers, are the same, the greater fraction has the smaller denominator. So the bottom number that is smaller is the bigger fraction. It's a little tricky, but once you remember that, that works. So then that would mean that two-fifths is um, larger than two-sixths. Just think of a pizza. If there were two pizzas, one had five pieces and one had six pieces. They were both the same size and diameter. Um, would you want a piece from the one that was cut and has five pieces, or would you want one that has six pieces? They'd be smaller, right? So that's why. 
Then, um, when the denominators are the same, the greater fraction has the larger numerator. So this is the opposite. The top number meet with the bigger number is bigger when the bottom numbers are the same. So that means that two-thirds is bigger than one-third. This one's a little less tricky to remember. Okay, so looking back up here, um, I've got six-ninths and six-tenths. Okay, and, and over here, remembering that this is the two-thirds and this is the three-fifths. Okay, so six is the same on the top. And so when they're the same on the top, that means that the fraction with the smaller denominator is bigger. So that means that this one with the nine is bigger. So that means that two-thirds is also larger than three-fifths. Now we could also show with the denominators. We already know that uh, two-thirds is larger, but we can just show for the purpose of learning. Um, we've got 10 over 15 and we've got 9 over 15. Okay, and then in this rule, remember when the bottom is the same, the top number that is larger is the larger number. So we would do this again. Okay, so there's our answer. Uh, two fifth or two thirds is greater than three fifths. All right, well, this was a little bit of a longer video, but it had a lot to go through. So if any didn't make sense, then please go through and watch again. Um, or you can ask if that doesn't help after that. Your assignment then is at the bottom of your page, page 172 to 173. Number 1 to 4, 6, 7, and 11. Now 11, remember um, the, the last strategy that we just talked about. That'll help you.